Ladies, what intrigues you the most about men? Story 1. Can men pee well hard? If they jacked off over a toilet bowl and released their full bladder at the same time, would it both come separately or at the same time? Would it feel better or worse? Can balls physically stop producing cum if you kept finishing repeatedly? Why are men scared of moaning? Do men even know that their sounds in bed? Everything from their breathing to a slight grunt is like the best thing, and the one question I've been dying to find out. What would it feel like to stick your junk in something carbonated, like a fizzy drink? Would the bubbles make the entire thing tingle nicely or would it feel like absolute bad? I read it in a fanfiction once and to this day the question has bugged me. Surely somewhere, a man has dipped his junk in a glass of coke. Somewhere, being a lady with a very delicate balance in there. I'd rather not risk infection to learn the answer to that. Story 2. It intrigues me how men are built. They're just so different from women. So much larger, wider, hairier and overall. Rougher, I'm sometimes just mesmerized by looking at my boyfriend and observe. Compare him to my body and I'm just in awe. How guys move, how they handle things, how they act with their significant other. Oh my, how soft and loving they get is so adorable. I can't get enough seeing that. Men's build is just so pretty to me. I know not every guy is built like Adonis or something, but that is even more interesting to me. Story 3. I tend to realize there's a lack of emotional support between male friends or how different it is when they talk about huge life changes, breakups, jobs, etc. etc. very nonchalant most of the time. If there is any emotion, usually alcohol is involved. I always try to see past what they say and just watch how they behave. I can see the suffering and it sucks to hear men always say they don't think it's okay to talk about emotions. Even though the hearing party is there with open hands, I wish emotions didn't have connections to masculinity. Are there ways that I could help without prying or making them feel like they are losing control? Story 4. I was just talking to my GF and her friend about how many little things about men's behavior versus women's behavior is driven by fear. Her friend accused men of being rude because we don't wait for our friends outside of a restaurant bathroom if we finish first. I asked her why we would do something like this and literally everything she could list was something along the lines of being sexually harassed or assaulted. I was like well, that's not really an issue for us so we just meet back at the table. Tons of other things too though. Where they park, where they go to have drinks, how they drink, how they set up their social media, and phones. What car they drive, where they live, who they're polite to, what pet they have. It just seems like so many things make me want to say why are you letting fear take over your life. Then I realize I don't have to fear half of the human population. Pretty much only people with guns and knives when I'm not at home. Story 5. I had this happen to me too in high school. I am an above average height female with middle sized proportions. My body frame is not designed to be a size zero. Having an unconventional body type definitely made me insecure as well as the fact that I was in the honors classes and did fairly well for myself but was made fun of quite a bit. What added to it was a guy I liked and would hook up with from time to time made me promise to never tell anyone because he didn't win things to get out. I remember feeling so bad about myself and confused by his behavior like why did he need to hide me? Was it so shameful that I was getting with him? It wasn't until the end of my senior year when the guys were ranking the hottest girls in my English class. This is late 2000 second suburban high school so toxic masculinity abounds and I ranked in the top 5 out of 10 minus 15 females but felt so surprised. Looking back I certainly shouldn't be looking for approval from men like that but it still hurts to think. You are being hidden away or perceived negatively of your peers because you are outside of what society deems normal. Story 6. When you guys dump us and give literally no reason why. What's going on there? Five years ago, I got dumped out of nowhere. Everything was going fine. THD night before the dumping he cuddled me all through the night, stroking my hair and telling me how special I was, and he just ended things the next evening and gave no explanation other than deal with it. Story 7. Honestly, I did this to my ex-girlfriend of three years. The real reason was that it was going to be far easier on her own head if I just didn't explain myself. Really my breakup came from a slew of reasons over many months of deliberation. She was boring, stubborn, and at some point I just was not attracted to her anymore. She was struggling to get along with my friends and had been distracting me from my degree. When I broke it off I went and saw her. All I said was I'm sorry about this but I don't think we can be together anymore. I love you, which was true, but I can't be with you. Of course she was like okay but why can't we be together? All I had to say was this just isn't working for me. I feel like it was way better for her that I just broke it off and gave her immediate and extreme space. Totally stop taking to her. But you really want your boyfriend of three years? 
who you had told countless times that he was the one, future husband, etc., to admit that you're boring and he thinks he can do better, that you are making his life worse. Talk about insult to injury. I broke it off the way because I didn't feel like it was better to just straight up tell her she kind of sucks and I want someone better. Edit. I feel like this question doesn't apply to just men, but dumpers in general. My personal opinion is that unless you're married the dumper owes you nothing. They're an individual and they deserve to do what makes them happiest, including getting away from you. Story 8. My mom used to clean bathrooms in malls and said that women's bathrooms are way dirtier than men's bathrooms. Lack of acknowledgement of privilege. Women have this fixed idea that male privilege comes at no cost. First of all, yes there are men who think that by default women are incapable of doing certain things and don't even give them a chance. But I also think women don't realize that men still have to compete for everything they want. We are just more used to it, while women are, to some degree, raised to be princesses, that can expect to be handed everything. If you want to have the same privilege as men, then you have to give up, that anybody cares how you feel. Okay, I may have written this somehow confusing. So in short, male and female privilege is a trade of between being successful in business versus being given cared for when you need help. Story 9. Most men have extremely negative experiences with opening up. People tell us all the time to be open etc. But what they usually mean, even if they don't admit it to themselves, is that the men needs to be open with positive emotions, care, affection, maybe some justified rage etc. Opening up with anxiety, self-doubt, body image issues, or just stress, crying your eyes out because it all is a bit much. You get called weak, pathetic, loser, non-man etc. Or even worse, you can see your partner suddenly looking at you with disgust. If at all, I talk about that shit with close friends or my brother, certainly not my wife. I had this discussion with a female coworker recently. She was adamant that it was okay for men to cry. To which replied, yeah, some tender man tears at the birth of your child, or at your father's funeral or some shit. Certainly not the inelegant blubbering women can get away with. In short, really, really opening up to your spouse is an enormous risk with scant, if any, advantages. Hello, the editor here. That last story was too cool. Like and subscribe for more. Story 10. I'm in my late 20s and my personal attitude towards problems has changed a lot over the last 10 years. In my teens I was very, very anxious and overthought everything. But now I'm much more straightforward. I don't beat around the bush anymore. I still have anxiety now. But it's more a case of chemical anxiety than mentally derived anxiety. Which I usually solve by meditating and going to the gym. A problem isn't going to improve by worrying about it. You can either put action towards it or wait. Usually waiting makes it worse. If there's no action to take, then just drop it completely because worrying about it won't change it. I've gotten a lot better at dropping it if I can't do anything about it as I've grown through my 20s. Edit. To add to what I said here, I can respond to EBP Badger's comment about social media. I avoid all social media. But I assume that we're all grown up now, and if people want to tell me something, then I'm assuming that they're telling me the whole story. There's nothing to overthink if you just take everything written as you see it. Being male I think helps in one regard because you're generally regarded as less emotional. Ike. Story 11. It's a matter of perspective. Most men go through life being rejected by women over and over again until finally one of the women you take a shot at doesn't reject you. That cuts your self-esteem down depending on how many times you get shot down. So when you run into a girl who seems like she's into you, you get the sense that she's just being nice, cause you've run into a girl before who also seemed to be into you but turns out she was just being nice. So you try not to offend them by asking them out. Then there are the women who if you're not their type or really attractive they react very very negatively to any advance you make. That makes some men really timid when it comes to telling women they like them. If you ever run into a guy who you think is extremely dense and can't tell that tons of women are hitting on him, he might have had his self-esteem destroyed by various women in his past. So talk to him, let him know in no uncertain terms how you feel. Of course some guys might also just be ignoring it because they aren't into you. But I dunno that might not be as common, at least not in my experience. Story 12. I have the social brain capacity of a caveman. If you like me, blinking three times is not gonna convey that message. Had this girl in high school ask me if I was gay, despite me not showing stereotypical signs. Took me three years to figure out she was probably just confused as fuck as to why I wasn't responding to any of her signals. I probably still haven't figured out half the signals she sent me back then. Shit flew straight over my head. I helped her with homework because she seemed to struggle with it and it was easy to me. But she did act a little confused when worked on homework all afternoon when she came over. You gotta tell me straight up. 
I don't get signals, and even if I do I would definitely brush them off as I'm probably just imagining it. It's gotta be 100% clear or I just won't take the risk. Story 13. Simply put, we're not psychic. What's obvious to you isn't obvious to us, and what's obvious to us isn't obvious to you. I guarantee you there are at least one or two guys in your past who have been interested in you that you never picked up on. There is no real difference in the anxiety men or women feel around relationships. The voice in your head telling you, what if he doesn't like me like I like him, is also in our head telling us the same thing. The only difference is that we are conditioned to have to ignore it or else be happy with being single. And that was before other things got in the way. I would be lying if I didn't admit that. Yes, I'm conscious of the fact that men, in the abstract, are largely objects of fear for women. That means that I must be careful with how I present myself and how I interact with them to an extent, in order to keep from sending the wrong signals. That also brings up worries about flirting and other borderline behavior. Is she actually into me? Or would it be an unwanted advance? Compound that with my general tendency to overthink everything and complete lack of experience, and it becomes hard to actually interpret subtle signals in the way you intend them to be interpreted. I imagine it's not too different for a good number of other men. Obviously not all of them, and obviously to varying extents, because a lot of guys do get over it and find women or men to spend some portion of their life with. But yeah, there's a lot that, honestly, I don't think you'll ever experience about it. Not unless you're a lesbian, anyway. Because I think half the useless lesbians out there are just women who are as paralyzed as some men are by the prospect of having to be the one to take the first step.